Oh, hey, welcome to a new type of uh, comedy mainline podcast where we can... <laughs> what was that? I can see Chris's <laughs> eye rolls now. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey guys, this we're we're doing it. This is a, we're trying something new. We're recording this video podcast today, so you can Steve see all is of our coming faces live from Jerry Garcia's underwear. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to know what the white parts are. <laughs> Jizz. <laughs> it's little Jerry Bears. <laughs> uh, we got Robert Burrill here today. Looks like he's. You look like yeah. you're in a prison cell. I'm in a prison with my own show poster behind me. That is, is that, the vibe. Is that what I'm, that is? That's from the Comedy Corner Underground, probably five years ago. Yep. What what else is on that wall? Is that the only thing on that giant wall? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. That's I got. <laughs> the whole a, house. I got. I got oh, there you go. The bobblehead dolls. There's a Bernie there. Yeah, yeah. Both of his show posters. Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. What's behind you, Chris? Boxes. All your and all your worldly trophy. possessions. All oh, your... and, yeah. Oh, and what's uh, uh, I guess a little something's popping out of those are all the those are the three comedy trophies I've won. <laughs> <laughs> So is that? Have you guys ever won trophies for other things? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I, I was. Jesus, dude, you said that like we shouldn't have. Or something. No, I'm curious. <laughs> I, I, I want to know more about your lives. I want to know more about your the trophies you've earned. Well, I've got three here. <laughs> Do you now want to say what their best sp- international spy? Like, can you not tell us what their? Well, yeah, no, I got. Um, I have. Uh, I, I got the Mister Hit Award in fifth grade football. Mr. Hit nice. Award? Yep. Did you just lay yep. some fucking little... <laughs> it was a season, a full season of punishment. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, like, trophy. I don't know if I... Yeah, well, I won um, every year from 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. We were uh, true team ta- uh, champions in track and field, Stillwater High School. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, every year. No, That's uh, cool. And then every year. <laughs> So I, I think basically I didn't have trophies. I had medals on my um my letter jacket. Oh yeah, I had that too. There you I go. That. Is that is yeah. that in one of the boxes? No, no, that is uh it's it's much sadder than that. It, it's wrapped <laughs> around my dead cat under the ground. Oh wow, that is a lot sadder than that. That is. That, thanks uh, for watching the show, everyone. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's that's a, great. She she pulled it down and made it into a bed, you know. Aww. And then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then she died, and then so I, I was distraught, and I buried her in my letter jacket. So, so here's what they're what's gonna happen. Someday, somebody's gonna dig that up and find mm-hmm. a letter jacket and little bones inside. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking that when I did it. <laughs> they're gonna. Ooh, do we just solve a crime? <laughs> but uh, this one behind me is second place at a satellite for. Um, uh, was World Series of Comedy? Oh my God! They give you a oh. huge trophy for that. It's a ba- It's like a basketball or it's like a volleyball trophy that he like made into a. It's like a homemade plastic. Yeah, trophy. yeah. That's and, cool. uh, it's pretty. It's funny. like a volleyball sanded into a microphone. He just took so, like a file and like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what it is, but looks you know, more like a shiv. But yeah, it's, it's supposed to be. He did anything at all? But, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, for people who don't know, like winning a satellite means like you're it's like the very first level of the comedy competition. So it's yeah. like, so a lot of trophies, not taking anything away from the other satellite winners, but yeah. there's bigger deals in the world. Uh, <laughs> and, but Whalen found it a couple of years ago. Like I had, mm-hmm. it, he pulled it out of like a closet and he was like, what is this? And I was like, well, it's uh, I was in the world series of comedy. And he hears world. <laughs> yeah. He goes, yeah. You got second place? I go, yeah. And he goes, like, in the whole, in the world? I was like, <laughs> I go, well, it was called the World Series of Comedy. And he just went, and he set it down, and he walked <laughs> all the way across the room and just hugged me. <laughs> I love that, I love that in his head. All downhill from here. What? 
<laughs> I love that in his head you're like facing off against Chinese comics and whole world, dude. Russian comics <laughs> and the whole world, Norwegian comics, and just slay like it's broadcast all over the world and just like cut to the audience in Japan just dying at your joke. <laughs> that's, in his mind, that's what it is. And, that's what I'm and, saying. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, and he tells his teachers that I'm a a world famous comic, and it's like none of them ever believe him. <laughs> Yeah, he says you're known. You gotta bring the trophy in. We know. Yeah. <laughs> bring bring the trophy in and then use it as the microphone as you do a set for the classroom. <laughs> hey guys and germs, thanks for uh, having yeah. me here. World <laughs> Series. Scott Scott Brady came to the third uh, Reapies, the mm-hmm. the Death Squad Awards, and he was yeah. wearing two of his trophies like around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Waylon is like sitting in his very tiny bedroom and is just confused (laughs) why he's like (laughs) why we have (laughs) he's not living under the stairs like Harry Potter (laughs) it's not a coffin (laughs) but I just you know (laughs) Waylon is actually wrapped in Chris's other Letterman jacket in a crawl space right now (laughs) you know what's hilarious about that is that someday somebody's gonna dig that up and find a letter jacket with little or bigger bones in the first one. Yeah, they'd be like, was this his girlfriend? Because I know the girlfriend's got the jackets. Was this no, guy dating go, a cat? Did they date go, I cats guess, back I then? guess it's just another cat. Yeah. <laughs> this cat won so many medals. This cat won. Was this this cat's... Did, you know, because if they saw Teen Wolf, maybe they thought that was a documentary and they thought that maybe there was this cat that just kicked ass in Stillwater. <laughs> Teen cat. <laughs> <laughs> Teen Cat's awesome. We, Teen Cat. I I wanted to do. I did a joke once. No one ever got it because no one's seen uh, Teen Wolf as much as me. Apparently, <laughs> they, they didn't get the reference. But like a joke about like getting your. I, I got my first erection, you know, and I'm in the bathroom, and it's just like, oh, it's like <laughs> just knocking stuff over. It's just huge, and all my pubes came out at once, you know. And then like, man knocking on the door. What are you doing in there? And I'm like. Nothing! And then I just <laughs> open the door, and we're both standing there with both of our erections. And he says, Son, we're not like other people. <laughs> <laughs> because our dicks are so big. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd always yeah. have to say at the end of the joke, like, no one laughs. They didn't think uh, it was funny when your dad just has an erection, too, on the other side of the door, the absurdity of... I guess Even when you, you don't get the reference, the joke that's... and it gets to that part, you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I'm in a room with boxes. <laughs> Dudes. Uh, Dudes. Dudes. How about you, Steve? You win anything? Um, I also had a letter jacket with medals on it. But, yeah. God, I'm so embarrassing because... They were for sucking dick. <laughs> I don't know if my family can hear me now or not. You know, a lot of schools don't even acknowledge that kind of performance, Steve, so I wouldn't be ashamed of that at all. That's one thing I think you should get participation awards for. Because I ran cross country and track, so we would get a medal. You would get a medal literally for just like, I mean, you wouldn't have to do that well, and you'd get a medal for every meet. You know what I mean? Hmm. So my mom insisted on putting every medal that I got on that jacket. So the fucking thing was like, it would like, like Sergeant Pepper. Yeah. It would yeah, like yeah. hang down funny. And I, and it, and I got my ladder jacket when I was a freshman. Cause I was on the varsity cross country team. And so my mom, thank you. And my mom was like, well, you should buy a bigger letterman jacket that like two sizes too big because you'll obviously you're going to grow into a man. <laughs> with a letter jacket and i never did i never grew i didn't i've been the same size since i've been in eighth grade so so then i have these all these medals so then my so jacket it looks like you're wearing like, your boyfriend's letterman jacket <laughs> yeah, everywhere. exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and uh so my senior photos you should see my senior photo it's like my jacket's all just shoveled because it's like hanging down weird and it's like i look like a, it's like two sizes too small i'm just drowning one of, one of the patches on steve's jacket is for swimming within the jacket itself like he was so good at <laughs> swimming in that jacket he also lettered yes. in swimming freestyle yeah freestyle so my mom did that too and i made the mistake of wearing it out like in front of my friends once 
because I, <laughs> I really have any yeah. friends on teams. Like I, all my friends are not on the team, and so I'm worn out. And it was like, oh no, we're hanging out all night. <laughs> Look at that. None of your friends were on teams. Yeah, a lot of them, like not none, but sure. It was uh, it was more like we'd go to football, and they would go like, "What's it like hanging out with the weirdos?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like doing it, doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. One time, I, yeah. One time I was at a, I was at a party. It was after I graduated. It was the summer after I graduated, and I was wearing my high school track state championship shirt that they gave you, you know, and uh, had my name on the back of it. And How big was the shirt? <laughs> it was regular size. It fit okay. Me. And, uh, oh, the metal and, uh, drug it down. But I went to a party. I went to, this is after high school, so I could go to the party. You know, I went to like the real parties or whatever. And but so all the older kids. <laughs> the real, I just the real picture, parties. I just picture you as like a reverse big. You know, like how he was a kid that got, <laughs> you're, like, you're like a man that then got, and then is just yeah. in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I only go to real parties. Let's just <laughs> yeah. stay out here. Yeah. So. They started making fun of me at the party because I was, you know, I accomplished things or whatever. And and, <laughs> and and they, one of the fuckheads there picked me up because I was a cross country runner. So I weighed, sure, you know, I weighed, sure. I weighed 120 pounds or whatever. The guy like picks me up and he's like, I'm going to throw you in the pool. And I was like, no, you can't. I have hearing aids. I have hearing aids. And that, that's what bullies love. You know, they love it when they can really fucking... I'm getting my dander's getting up a little bit right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if anything's gonna slow a bully down, it's finding out his target is weaker than he already imagined he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just yeah, yeah. I'll just reveal a weakness he doesn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll have some sympathy for me. Uh, <laughs> I've got this guy's number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so of course he just crumbled in a sympathetic pile, and we hugged until Did the rest of the, the party. Pool? Yes, he threw me in the fucking pool, and what I ruined hearing my hearing aids. aids. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they were gone, dude. And then I was so pissed. And then, but, and then my friend and I, uh, a few weeks later, we snuck out of our parents' house and went to where that guy lived and stole his motorcycle and threw it in the mill pond. Nice. Got you the limitation. Sweet revenge, oh. dude. I have such a. I did like almost the same thing in elementary. I got tubes put in my ears. You know what that tubes. is? Tubes. Why? To put what happened? Tubes in your ears. Like, I don't know. It was like I had a, uh, I would get ear aches. Oh. And they were like, oh, a medical got, procedure. You know, okay. Ear stuff in there. So they put these tubes in there to like clear it out. Sure. Or and like somebody threw like an, an ice chunk at the side of my head and <laughs> recess. And it was like, like a snowball, snowball yeah, ice like chunk. A big ice chunk. Yeah. Like, tore through my, my skin yeah. and my ear. And I was like, <laughs> you know, it didn't probably hurt, but I was so mad that I yelled. I have tubes in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very bullyable offense for sure. Uh, when when you said it, so I, I I had something similar. What I I was hoping you're going to tell a story about just throwing a small kid in a pool, like you were the bully. <laughs> like <laughs> I did something similar, except you're on the, you know, the bad guy this, end of it. I I saw this dude at a party once. <laughs> What? <laughs> and he was just this huge so t-shirt on all these metals. Yeah. <laughs> all the metals really helped him sink down to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> did you ever did you ever get bullied, Robert? You ever get bullied out there in the world other than by like Mike Lester or when you were an Yeah, as Mike an adult or... I did. As a kid, yeah. not not so much. Because I, I think part of it you ever seen that did you ever watch Thirty Rock? Sure. Yeah. There was one of my favorite episodes. This is a good is, segue. This is going to be a good, good se- segue. This would be a good segue, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was an episode where Liz Lemon goes back to her high school reunion. And in her mind, like everybody was mean to her and she was picked on. And then she's talking to them and their memories were of her saying like really cutting hurtful things to them. And they're like, no, wow. you. And I feel like that's probably what it was like for me in high school. Like I never really got bullied. Um, and I... I was kind of friends with with everybody. I didn't get invited to a lot of parties, but some. It was just, again like a even keel thing. Mm. Uh, but I also <laughs> could be could be you know like nothing oh I don't get to go changed. to a party, but the, no nothing is <laughs> nothing has changed. Few more but parties. I, Few I would more you know I could zing some people, so I feel like if anything I might have been more of the the bully than uh, other people. Yeah, but not not physically. I never got beat up or anything or. I was usually pretty good at talking my way out of stuff. Because the people that got into fights were, 
usually pretty dumb and you could see where it was going and it was mm. just like i'm not i don't want to be a part of this like yeah i could you know we're, we're disagreeing like this isn't uh very to, yeah exactly like let's just agree <laughs> to disagree and uh you know you can have the dollar like i don't Whatever. He's in second grade. Let's agree. I'm wearing corduroy and said, like, <laughs> let everybody just calm down, okay? Yeah. This has gotten way out of hand, all right? I feel like there's a lot of ups, a lot of downs going on right now. <laughs> you know, I, you're rubber, I'm glue, I'm glue, you're rubber, I'm felt, you're, I'm corduroy, you're a scissors. It doesn't, we're all items. You know, you need all of us to make crafts, right? It doesn't matter. Like, this is all, you know, this is home ec, boys. We're all we're all required, okay? Everybody's needed. Mr. So and Mrs. Burrell, we've, we just have to say we've never seen a first grader speak this way. It's very <laughs> diplomatic. I think he's got a bright future. He's diffused every swirly. <laughs> <laughs> I just I come in. I'm like I'm like a little lawyer that just represents whatever dweeb they're like. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Okay, I get it. I I want to do it too, but we have to think long term now. There's a camera here. The big games next week. You don't think this is gonna come back at you in some way? It's just gonna unswirl itself. Yeah. Okay? It's not gonna stay that way. And then where will you be? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Think right. about that. I also think that'd be a good album title for you, Chris, is Diplomatoc. And oh, then you could oh. like have a suit with just like a little binder and you're like at the UN <laughs> or something. Oh, you could have I like, like 30 albums like that because, yeah, I've thought of all those. I wanted to do Problematic. Prob but I'm yeah, like, Problematic. Oh, so good. yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not that... Um, you know, like uh, ballsy out there, controversial, you know. No. Oh, don't sell yourself short. Sounds, sounds like, no, I just get angry. <laughs> <laughs> The angriest Chris has ever been. I gotta work on that. Um, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I feel like I could do that uh, not any worse. Um, <laughs> so, no, I, I drove a few blocks from my house and then mm. I got a flat tire. Oh, well, uh, Chris had to get, you know, she was like getting to work and I was Chris's, like, Chris's wife, Chris, my wife and my son is at home by himself. So I've got to get mm. back there. Anyone watching the show for the first time might think you're divorced based on all the U-Haul boxes behind you. But Chris is very happily married and things are going well yeah. for him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so wait, so check the this trophies. Is still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's still here. Uh, I would leave him, but he finished second place in the world. World. <laughs> and, you know, barring finding the the number one. <laughs> yeah. um, so is this the first? Are, I, how old is Wayland again? Don't know. He's, Can you uh, ballpark it? He's 10. Ten. Okay. So is that, that's not, you don't, you don't leave 10 year olds alone. You no, know, you either. can for oh, hours, you... but they, uh, I don't know what the rule is. I know it, it was like eight years old was like, then it was the first it, lawfully you can leave them alone for an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got, I got a timer like the Olsen twins. Like, I got, like, <laughs> yeah. like yep. One hour, hour and then you stay there for 15 minutes and then you leave again. For yeah. <laughs> Technically I came back. Um, so it's not that big a deal, but it is like, you know, it, I was planning on being right back and sure. Sure. You know, so whatever. It's not like he's like checking the fucking phone or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Or like uh, shoving knives in the light sockets and like just becomes instantly suicidal the second no one's in there. Like, yeah. I wonder yeah. if I can hang from the ceiling fan with this belt around. You know, it's not. <laughs> I'm gonna play Spaceman. Put it past him. <laughs> <laughs> real hoot, real hoot, that kid. But you know, you know, you get more stressed out than you need to be. So the tires flat, and then we got to park in front of this like. It, walker methodist health center and there's a uh, no, we have i got to pull right in like the no parking area that's on the street and uh chris is like shit you know she's got to get to work and i'm sitting here going like uh you know i gotta figure this out or do i gotta get home and so i go inside to ask the woman at the reception desk you know are, are you where are you the one that's gonna call the tow because i'll be back that kind of thing and, mm -hmm. and she's just on the phone she's going no Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, and I go, you know, just go in twice. So then the third time I go in and she's off the phone and I go, 
hey, my uh, car just broke down in that no parking area on the street. And she went like this. <laughs> like, you wonder yeah. how mass shootings happen. What? Like, yeah. Oh, life, you know? And, yeah. and yeah. I went, yeah, yeah, it's very funny. Yeah, I think it's funny, too. So, uh, <laughs> look, I was just wondering, do I uh, ask you about that? Do, you know, I'm trying to get the words out, of, you know, just like, it's just, I'm in white hot rage. And uh, I'd like to see the camera if there was one on me, because I think like, you know, I've ever seen like a, a flame start on an infrared camera. I think my <laughs> body just must've went like, Whoom. and uh, so then she goes, I'm going like, do I just, do I ask you or, and she goes, uh, well, I mean, what, which part broke down? And I'm like, are you standing up to fix it? Or just, you, you know, I'm going, yeah. I, I, I just, do you, are you the one? She goes, well, did you know it was going to break down? And I went, what? I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have to go i have to go and i just like went up like i i hit the door on the way like the kabooji, you know on the way out and then i did it i went outside i ranted for like two seconds to chris my wife and then i turn around and with like i i did like a running double finger middle finger at her <laughs> 65 to 70 year old woman <laughs> And I only regret that I didn't have more hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I was so mad. So did, how did you get Did you fix the tire? What would you do? Fucking A, buddy. Oh, you just got it out, huh? You just cranked that thing up? Well, we got fucking... AAA, so I got, you got to get it <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah, AAA is a shit. Yeah. I change my tire if I'm on the freeway because I don't want to stand there waiting, but otherwise, I like, get them to do it. Oh, yeah. It's their job. Yeah, dude. You're a job creator. That's what he showed when he showed up. He goes, "Hi, are you Chris?" I go, "This is your fucking job." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he, he was. No, what he said was he showed up and he got, and he went. Uh, Did you know that was gonna break down here? Look, what, uh, what part of the car? What part of the car broke down? Did you? I was talking to Janice. No, he was like a Eddie Murphy character. This guy was like, he 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 called me and I'm like, okay, I'll come down. Like you can't find the car, and he's parked across the street from it. All the and he's cleaning his glasses. <laughs> and I go, it's right there. And he goes, he goes, oh, get the better put the down. One time I was with Dave Waite in Los Angeles and his tires, he, he would only buy like $30 tires, used tires <laughs> from some like. That checks like he'd out. Have to, I yeah, and he'd have to re- he'd have to replace his tires like you know every three months, and and then he <laughs> and he'd out and he'd get you know he would go and he would, his tire would pop and then he would just take it to you know the place where they would plug it you could get your tires yeah plugged. yeah so you had multiple plugs and multiple tires <laughs> and you drive on the freeway with these fucking things looks like and, a uh, dollhouse car or something yeah exactly so we were we at some show and we were coming back and his one of the tires popped again and uh we couldn't fi- fix it this time and then and then we actually had to like try to put the spare on because he didn't have uh he didn't have triple a or whatever and so we could not both of us we had like the arm on the on the lug nuts or whatever and we could not get them loose like we're like jumping up and down on the bar trying to get it to fucking loosen it and then we just give up. And then Dave's like, fuck it. I'm just going to call this place or whatever. And then this guy just shows up. And he's just like, yeah, he just looks at both of us like we're the two biggest fucking little bitches ever. And just, yeah, just like that. Just one little arm crank. Yeah. And then Dave and I were like, well, we probably loosened that up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I have some of those walnuts off your arm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robert, do you ever win a trophy? Right. Yeah, <laughs> we forgot to ask I, you, didn't we? I was we? wondering. We just assumed that you probably didn't. That I assume you did. Uh, community theater. Uh, best of course. Two thousand. <laughs> Are you being serious? I'm being serious. Yeah. You were in a community theater play. What about me makes you think I wouldn't be in community theater? That's, Absolutely uh, nothing. <laughs> I did community theater uh, for um, uh, community service. 
What? Are you serious? Really? For what, like they, a DUI? They Whatever. sentenced you to guys and dolls? How did that even work? Because the, the, the person directing it was my, was my music teacher in my uh, first year of uh, college. Um, yeah. And uh, at Vermilion Community College in Ely, Minnesota. And uh, so, yeah, I got a DUI. I got sentenced to like 90 hours of community service. So I, Holy uh, shit. You got to make that into a bit. So yeah, she, you do. The judge is just he's like, like – He's like, I need a bass player – for uh, Joseph in the amazing Technicolor dream coat. Oh, tight! And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. And she's like, can I just do yeah, hard I'll, time? <laughs> she's like, I'll take time off your community service. And I'm like, fuck, you know. And then it turned out to be just awesome. You know, it was so fun. But, I bet. Do, were you on stage, or were you like in the pit, or whatever? We were like off to the side. Mm. Uh, there was no pit, but we were like off to the side and. Uh, uh in the dark you know basically but like it was so yeah. fun and, and and the drummer was like this dude who was in all the bands in ely he was like a and he was like um kind of close to like sloth or something from goonies Just oh like, okay like, <laughs> like a, a a large lovable you know terrifying human being yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> he refused like as a matter of principle to play softly like he <laughs> Tell the teacher, you know, it was like we would be like, you know, Dad, Joseph, doo -doo -doo. yeah, and he'd be like, <laughs> and she'd go like, and he would go, I don't play softly, <laughs> and she had no one else. That's so. That's funny. so much better than having to pick up trash on the side of the road, or you know, I know I had to do that. God damn it! I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. No, you're not. This, this is, is one of the funniest no, things happened yeah. in this DUI. That this he sentenced like, you to six shows a week or five <laughs> shows a week, matinee like on a, Sunday. It's like a fucking movie. It's like a script. So one of the things I had to do was I had to travel to Embarrass, Minnesota. That's the name mm. of the town. It's called Embarrass. Yeah. And uh, look it up. It's spelled Embarrass. So, <laughs> How is it pronounced? Embarrass? I think. Like, that's what everyone says. This sounds like a plot to a Disney Channel movie, like a DUI, yeah. but we're sentencing you well, to that's musical what? theater. Mighty and Ducks, like, <laughs> isn't it? Mighty Ducks. That's and basically you're gonna go movie. to a town where everyone's embarrassed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they don't dance, they don't sing. Good luck, Chris. Try yeah. to work off that DUI there because you should be embarrassed. Yeah, dude. A e m b a r r a s s a s s. Not using a sentence, that. Steve. I went to Embarrass, Minnesota. <laughs> Is that okay. How do you embarrass that's, the state? That's, 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 yeah. uh, I, I think I, I just embarrassed oh, myself. That's their, that's their tourism logo. That's their tourism uh, slogan. I went to Embarrass, Minnesota. <laughs> but so anyway, well, what happens I, there? What ha what? I went to the the alcohol awareness classes, whatever you know. And that, they were in mm -hmm. Embarrass. Yeah, yeah, they, they held, it was like, because you're way up north, so it's like, and it was 95, so you're like, well, you're one of the three people to get a DUI this year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> everyone's still so cool. So, yeah. like, <laughs> uh, so it was, like, people from all over the region and area and stuff. So so we went there, and there was this dude who, he, uh, like, he just looked like, uh, like uh, Hank Hill, you know, but with, like, more of a pear-shaped giganticness to him he'd have the mm -hmm. trucker hat you know he'd pull it up and their hair goes up like that and shows their skull <laughs> a little bit and uh you know he's, man, you know he's just not about uh you know you're not really about that kind of thing about that kind of stuff and uh he he's you know always wears camo and shit and uh he he would sit in the back of the class this guy was like he's one like look i'm almost i'm six years from 50 and in my mind he's like maybe 60 tops but he's yeah. just that kind of 60 that's just a hard-worn 60. Sure. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he couldn't not do this, like, every 15 to 30 seconds. <laughs> like, <laughs> he did a hiccup burp every 15 to 30. Like, Involuntary. He had, he had yeah. a problem. Yeah. And so it was like the whole hour and a half or whatever it was where he's doing this and the whole class, obviously it's just like, it's just right there for everyone. You know, it's just a guy talking at the woman talking at the front of the place. And so then the next, so we do that. Then the next week we all meet up there again 
and she starts right back up again. And maybe around five minutes into the class, somebody finally went like, <laughs> and everyone just got <laughs> All the steam started coming out from the whole week before and just like, and everyone just started laughing. And the teacher was going like, you know, God, hey, everyone, let's, let's be respectful. And the guy in the back finally says, like, no one said anything. We all just start laughing for no reason. He says, it's a normal human function. <laughs> and everyone just like, ah! we were like, here's that poor dude. <laughs> a normal human function. It's like, clearly it's not, dude. Just, you know, drop that. Yeah. Man, these dudes like writing. No need to be frightened. They just wrote. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, Alec Baldwin killed somebody. I don't know. Can you give you... us an Alec Baldwin uh, killed somebody riff, Chris? Real yep. quick. I have two to choose from. It's like jazz scat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Adam. at the end, he kills someone. Because <laughs> I shot a woman in New Mexico. Didn't know the gun was loaded. Bow, 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 So like yeah, Seinfeld. What? Bump, 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 bump. Kramer, you put a blind bullet in the gun? Oh, Jerry! Ah. Um. So I don't I know almost nothing about this whole thing. I mean, obviously, I heard a little, you know, the very like. I mean, I'm not going to go too into detail. I just wanted it because there's a bit that I I and it's got a shelf life. Obviously, can I I I can I ask you something? Ask you something first. Do you is it? Have you noticed? Because I know you're kind of in touch with some of this stuff. Has like the right wing shows like Fox news and that have they been going really hard after Alec Baldwin for all this because of Baldwin's, you know, cause he did all the Trump impressions or whatever. Uh, at, at the very start, I think, uh, Eric Trump posted some joke about like how guns don't kill people. Alec Baldwin kills people. Um, mm. which I posted first, but like, ironically, I think he's actually trying to make that argument. I was like making fun of people that make that argument. Um, yeah. But I think that that quickly died down after. But um, it's not still like a big talking point. No, because I, I mean, I feel like they're probably focusing on COVID and socialism mm. and All right. gays curious. and critical it? race theory. And now oh, if Alec yeah. Baldwin had killed her using critical race theory, they'd probably still be talking about it. If he'd <laughs> have just been like, racism exists. And then she was like, ah, you know, then he'd probably... <laughs> Uh, said he just shot her. That is a that is a loaded gun, man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I guess they were trying to save a lot of money. They were shooting in New Mexico as a, just a seven million dollar budget, which is okay. not much. So yeah. the, the the crew was overworked. A few of the camera people had quit because of just the conditions. It was long hours. They'd have to oh. drive to and from, and people were doing multiple jobs. And they still don't know how, one, the live bullets were on the set, and two, how it got in the gun. Um, I don't think charges have been filed yet, but I forget what the, the name of the the gun handler is. Uh, she's come under suspicion. And Baldwin, in his interview, he admitted he like pulled the hammer back, and they were doing an insert. It was the choreographer that died, and the director got shot. And so it wasn't a, uh, I mean, it was part of it, but it wasn't like a big scene they were shooting where he was like aiming at an actor. He was like aiming it at the camera and he like pulled the hammer back just for an insert, which for the people watching the show that aren't, you know, familiar with show business like the three of us are, uh, it was, it was an insert. So just a quick cut of the gun and he pulled the hammer back and then he released the hammer. He didn't actually pull the trigger. He just released the hammer. And from what I understand, The way prop guns normally work is one, like, that shouldn't fire the gun anyway. But then Mm -hmm. it also should be a blank and not a live bullet. And, you know, obviously it it, uh, fired and and, uh, killed her. And he was pointing it. He was pointing it at. It still ended up being pointed at her Mm -hmm. somehow. Wasn't it a ricochet or am I wrong? Oh, I don't think. I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I could be wrong too, but I believe he was pointing it. It was pointing it at them because it was supposed to be an insert, just a cut of a very, a very extreme close up of him pulling the hammer back and releasing the hammer that they would use, and then cut into a scene where he's shooting somebody. Yeah. 
But the bit that I wanted to do, the, the humor I found in this, because uh, I'm a psycho, it's just the idea of how prevalent, the, the lesson to take from this is sadly how prevalent on film sets the telephone game still is, where it's like, this gun's loaded, pass it on. Uh, or there's a bullet in the gun, pass it on. Bullying's fun, pass it on. Oh, I'm full, I could want none. Of what? I don't know, man. Just give Alec this gun and then tell him to shoot at that lady. And then, you know, he does it. <laughs> there's just so many... I mean... <laughs> no, and then that... the second part, the second part of it is just how people have been dying in movies for a long time. It's just no one cares and they're called stuntmen and no one cares if they die, you know, because, you know, it's not really Tom Cruise flipping that helicopter. That's a, that's a, gro that's why it's called Mission Impossible is you don't get to do that and live and stunt yeah. people die and we don't care, but. Right. Although I do believe Tom Cruise does a lot of stunts. He does do, he does do a lot of stunts. He's my that's favorite true. Scientologist. That's true. Um, Mine's Travolta. <laughs> I like Travolta. He doesn't do a lot of his own stunts anymore, uh, but still, I like Will. A lot of his own dialogue, though. We can, res you know, be respectful. That's hey. You know what? We don't need to. We don't need to resort to fisticuffs or anything here, guys. We can all have our own opinion, and we don't have to have our know. stuntmen battle each other. No, no. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> that would be funny if we oh, all three of us had stuntmen, and if we were ar ever arguing, we would just send them in to fight. <laughs> yeah, we have our champions that. with us at all times. <laughs> I feel like your Steve, your stuntman would be like a twelve-year-old boy. You would. Oh, he'd beat the be fuck like... out of you. Dude. <laughs> my my stuntman's stunt man. like my stuntman's stunt like man. six five, two eighty. My stuntman's John Cusack. <laughs> When you shake a guy's hand and it feels too small, that's like the scariest shit I could ever fucking... It's like, this guy is going to kill you and everybody. <laughs> You're saying when, they, when that guy's hand's too small? Yeah. Oh, why? Because you think he's got like a Napoleon complex type of thing? or it's what? Like, But gremlin powers and like... <laughs> okay. Um, just a lot of gnashing and thrashing. Sure. You're sure. afraid he'll <laughs> shrink like sure. Ant-Man, then just crawl up your pant leg and just fucking... Take you Do you out. know the respect he gets among his people when he kills someone, you know, normal size? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like taking imagine. out a giant. Yep. Yeah. We, Did you we know? Don't have that much at stake. Speaking of other uh, other actors that have died on set, did you ever see the Twilight Zone movie? No. I think it came out in like the '80s. It was four different directors shot four different vignettes, and John John. I mean, it was Landis, called. The it was called, called the Twi Twilight, Zone, Twilight movie. Zone movie. They just okay. took four, I think it was like four or five of the TV show episodes and reshot them, made them theatrical. And, and one of them was the, the infamous William Shatner one where he's on the plane, the gremlin's on the wing, no one can see it but him, except it was John Lithgow. So they did that. And there was one scene with Vic Morrow who played this bigot and he says a bunch of horrible stuff in a bar and then what happens is he goes out and he just becomes a victim of all those hate groups. So he's Jewish, the Nazis are going after him. He's in North Korea, the Viet Cong are going after him. Um, he's in the antebellum South, the Klan's going after him. But anyway, they were shooting a scene with a helicopter. It was like the Vietnam scene and the helicopter crashed and killed him and a couple of kids. And Landis oh, wound wow. up getting sued. Yeah, and that's why most people haven't heard of that anymore uh, is because... It was it was a big movie where you know the one of the lead actors died, kind of yeah. like The Crow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How? Jesus. So just to be, uh, I was excited when you said we were going to do a little laughing matters kind of action. You know, that's made me think of a of a. So I want to. I just want to like talk about like how. Yeah. All those things happen. Like how does what? How does a live bullet get mixed in with? I mean. It, it's funny when you, because I was watching the the twenty or listening to the twenty twenty podcast about it, and they were. It's funny because like half the people just think it's incompetence, but then the other mm -hmm. half think that it might have been some resentful crew member or somebody who's just like, well, this will scare them or like this will show them. And the attempt, the I mean, whenever charges are brought, I think it'll be hard to to show a direct intent to kill, but certainly manslaughter or something. Like you can't just bring live ammo well now is he is, is he is he actually being charged i don't think it's as far as i know alec baldwin hasn't been charged with anything that's like the right the right wing people yeah. are like you know charges you know the charges coming or it's, it's just like for what like yeah, yeah. i mean i i don't know it's like 
they're like, how do you point a gun with something in it at somebody? It's because I thought people did that in movies all the time. Yeah, uh, and since when yeah. is the right wing have a problem pointing guns at people? <laughs> Uh, in this instance, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's the only gunman they're not going to back up. In Alec Baldwinian situations, yeah. See, if Alec Baldwin had been in Kenosha and shot a bunch of people, he'd be he'd be fine. But he's on the set of a movie, and so it's completely, <laughs> completely different. I mean, the fact that can, hasn't technology? Can't you just cut? Can't you just have like a boom sound and then cut real quick and then just cut right. back? And the guy's like, I mean, who's watching? A, a movie made in this day and age and is like nah, not realistic enough like after the, watching the fucking yeah. avengers and stuff where they're yeah. tra- time traveling mm-hmm. and you know oh but this west ah that's probably a fake gun i'm i'm not into this yeah. and then, like and then the our sensibilities will get used to that and they'll go back and they'll change godfather and be like pew 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> got yeah. you yeah. <laughs> moving 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 Though they're disapproving, keep them jokes improving and right. Let's see what Steve wants to talk about. No, I have. I've been just noticing in my life how much I attract crazy people, and I I know that I've been on the road with you guys. I know there's been times when Chris and I have been on the road, and we'll walk into a, like a bar or restaurant, and like the whole place will just stop and just like turn around and look at us or me mainly. And uh, I just feel like anytime someone's like a bit aggressive or is just a bit off, um, they just seem to want to interact with me a lot. And I was uh, the most recent time has been I was on the train or I was going I was waiting for a train to go to the airport in downtown Denver. And there was like 10, maybe 15 just people that were clearly going to the airport waiting for the train. And then there was a woman who was homeless, um, I'm guessing, you know, she could have chose any of the other 15 people that were on that platform. But she beelined it to me walked past at least half of those people and got right up into my face and just started <laughs> just screaming just nonsense right into on my a, face on a scale of one to ten how homeless were you looking at the time because maybe oh, she thought there might have been like a kindred's <laughs> like oh he doesn't have a home either i bet he's got a great recipe I mean, for trash can chili I did have I did have luggage with me, but that's not really. You would have luggage with you if you are homeless, so I guess that's yeah, not. Yeah, that could have been. But I had, you know, I I I would say I looked less homeless than other times in my life. I don't know if that's, but yes, I get your point. Sure. Uh, but you yeah, weren't, you weren't there in a suit. You you weren't clean shaven with a suit and a Bluetooth and. No. Yeah. No, I was not. No, I was not. But. I guess that's a good point. Maybe it is because I do look a bit disheveled. That uh, I was gonna say, like uh, when you you sent the the premise, like I will say one of the things that uh, you, you definitely give off a vibe of somebody who's probably not gonna call the cops. So yeah. I think that like you know if anyone is troubled, that's a compliment. Whether or not it's yeah, I mean if you know if the person's like schizophrenic or they got some sort of mental illness or they're homeless or whatever and. You know, they want to share their demons with somebody. They probably look at you and they're like, well, this guy's not going to call the cops yeah. on me. This guy's probably yeah. got his own shooter. Like, this is someone yeah. that gets it. Like, and yeah, I would and- never say that it's because you wear pajama pants in public. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, <laughs> one I out do- of 15, you know, you're probably the only one. I was well, wearing I was wearing for, sweatpants. For people that I'm, don't know what I'm Steve dresses on the plane. like in public, the world is his Walmart. <laughs> the world is Steve's Walmart, and he dresses sandals, uh, pajama pants. Uh, Behind you know. him is his uh, pants on his clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those, his background is his pants. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, but it is it is like even when I tried to walk away from her, she would just fought, she started laughing when I wa- so she thinks away. you're playing hard to get. <laughs> yeah, and then she just kept. I mean, it was like a good ten minutes because it took forever for the train to come, and I was just like, and you know, no one else helps you in those situations, you know? No, they're just grateful it's it's you. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You set the crazy up. pick. You're the one that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve, I've seen it happen, and the thing is, is like, I'm. I'm that guy, except for when I'm with you. Yeah, you get it too. 
Like, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. People just, I've had my friends just go, what do you do? I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. and a woman get off the bus once and just go, I saw what you fucking did. <laughs> 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 oh yeah man but like uh <laughs> i think it's uh you know definitely part of the bit should be going through your you know at least physical if not you know what your face might be uh giving away well you do you know, sure. you be like maybe it's these things about myself and then really oh see, yeah i mean do you, you, you know? do you i mean jesus i believe had a similar problem too where uh, like the yeah. lepers you know just the real shit balls were like oh, heal my arm thing and it's like <laughs> ah god you know so i think i don't know if you did that on the album or not but you have some jokes comparing yourself to jesus i think yes, that'd I be do. yeah yes, you I have do. like those warm savior eyes you know you got yeah. like that comforting that face <laughs> like you're there yeah. to you know That's what You'll heal anybody as long as they ask you inside them, you know? Yeah, that was kind of the other thing I was thinking about. I was like, do I just lean into it, you know? And then just become the leader of all these just That's really funny. Books. Yeah, it sounds... They all yeah, start exactly. off as, with, the, with leadership aspirations, though. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch that. Like, <laughs> because here's the thing. You know, it all starts One, for everybody. Yeah. One's, one's a creep, but 50, that's a following. Now you gotta follow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Have you guys ever heard of the Ding Dong Show? No. No. I can't think of his name. Show? Yeah, that's a pretty good actually. <laughs> but <laughs> up other shows on our show. <laughs> I wish we were that show. <laughs> no, it's a like stand-up show. It was a stand-up show. I don't think they do it anymore, but they do it in Los Angeles. And um, Don Barris, I think the guy's name is, um, is an LA comic sort of, and he would have this show where he would take all these, the craziest people in LA that wanted to go up on stage. They weren't really comics, but they were all like, kind of like deranged street people. Yeah. And sure. he would, he would call it, them. Yeah. And he would call it the ding dong show and he would just parade these oh. guys out one right after another. And they would all just be going insane on stage and he would be off stage but he would be like the wrangler he would be like yeah. wrangling these guys and like telling them you know trying to get them to get off stage when they wouldn't fucking shut up that just stuff. sounds like a comedy show that just yeah. sounds like a i don't know what the difference is between Have that you and oh man comic standing stand you know the <laughs> early ones like the first one where they were standing in line we went down and interviewed people it was like the first oh yeah yeah in line. yeah, yeah. like we go like what are you gonna do she's like i don't know and we're like are, have you ever done comedy? Never. <laughs> have you ever been on stage? Never. Well, what do you think's going to happen at this stand-up comedy competition? The light's going to come on and I'm going to shine. <laughs> I'm like, so I totally had the fucking, that idea once at this coffee shop I worked at. I was like, I'm going to get all those people on Craigslist to like, <laughs> and then I'll have a show. And she goes, yeah, and then you can like exploit them. I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. that, that is what I'm thinking of doing. <laughs> yeah, I do. This, I is do like a, like, this is a really long running show in Los Angeles, the Dig the, Dog Show. I like the idea of like coming to visit you, Steve, after not seeing you for like five years, and it's like apocalypse now. Like I have to cross this river. And, like, <laughs> you just have like this whole army of like degenerate, yeah. mentally yeah. ill creepos just surrounding oh, you and fanning you and yeah. But yeah, I think you could definitely do it like the cult route with it and all that kind of stuff, the Jesus thing. And like, yeah. st start off by like the inconvenience of it. But then you could also say that now you're, you're, you're working to your advantage of like, you know, cult leader following and. Yep. Would you guys ever join a cult? Yeah, we'll be in your cult. <laughs> yeah. yes steve yeah. we'll join your call yeah well i have to just so you guys know i mean i'm just gonna let you guys know that i will take the burden of sex off of you and i will uh that's what he you, guys no have to, you guys no longer have to you guys no longer have to have sex with your wives i will take that burden the burden of sex off of me but really he's just humping my butt you don't you don't open with you have to cut your dicks off, Steve. That's cult leader one oh one. You have to ease them in to cut your dick yeah. off. That's a hard yeah, thing yeah. to swallow coming out of the gate. Just do you a know, second that's... circumcision here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a whittle. Looks, looks like the last guy left way too much on. Hang on a second yeah. here. Let me just uh Good for you, buddy. I think you need to we all have yeah. to have the same size dicks. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and so uh, I have the perfect size. We'll get some of his, put it on some of his. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Some people would get. Some people would be into it because they would get more dick. They would have to. Don't think of. Yeah. Don't think of it as losing your penis. Think of it as getting closer to your balls. <laughs> <laughs> think of it as gaining a friend. Me. <laughs> the guy that's cutting your dick off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to cut my dick off. Well, I'm not sure if we can be friends then, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You should just walk, Steve. You just walk into like downtowns around America. It's like, it's just, like, <laughs> like the like Pied right Piper now, like, crazy. Right now you're you're trying to get through without talking to him, but just imagine if you just opened up to. Oh yeah, man, you're absolutely right. It would all it just, just come to you. It'd be like that scene at the end of Joker where they're just like carrying him on that on the, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the way and put him up on the cop car. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Except instead it. of clown masks, it's like Grateful Dead t-shirts. And... Just like, just take your shirt off and like pour like gin all over your chest, and just have them all feed. <laughs> just <laughs> suckling gin suckling off my your, teeth. Your, your, your gin soaked chest hair. <laughs> yes, my babies. <laughs> thanks for listening everybody to the comedy mainline i hope you guys enjoyed the show robbie did you have a good time always man all right uh, Chris, thanks for being on again. Oh, yes. well. Please go to our Apple podcast page. Give us a rating and a review. That'll continue to move us up uh, on the podcast charts and whatever else. And please go to our Patreon. Like, for example, today's episode, you heard about an hour of Chris and Robert and I. And there's a whole other half an hour of episode, bonus episode, that is on our Patreon. And if you go to www.patreon.com forward slash comedy mainline, you will be able to get to that. And we have all of our full episodes with the bonus content uh, tacked on. So please check that out. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day.